welcome to a Word for This Day podcast. I'm Jory Schaefer, the show's host and creator, and it is my joy and my pleasure to welcome you today. Welcome back to all you regular listeners. I'm so thankful that you are here. Thank you for coming on this journey with me. Thank you for wanting to know more of God and His Word. I'm so excited for us to be here together. And then welcome to anyone who has found us for the first time. I'm so glad that you are here. It's no accident that you're here, friend, so please don't run off quite yet. Stick around for a bit and see what the Lord has for you today. I'm so excited for us to be uh, on this journey, just continuing to look at a verse uh, each day that matches the date. This is the third season of this podcast, and um, I'm just so thankful to see what God is doing in that and where he puts this podcast. I think we're up at the time of this recording, uh, which is about four days before it'll go live, um, we the podcast has been downloaded in 64 countries and uh, I believe it's like 929 cities across the world. And that's a, a God thing. That's just all him. And I give him the thanks and the praise and I pray that he will just uh, do with that what he will and may he be glorified in all the all the ways and all the things. And so uh, I want you to know that I continue to pray for you. I continue to pray that the Lord would draw you closer to him, that he would give you more of a desire to know him and his word. Uh, Know that I love to hear from you. So if you feel so led, send me a message sometime. Let me know what the Lord's doing in your life as you're spending more time with him. And in saying that about spending time with him, make sure this is not the only time you think about him today, friends. Please be working on a Bible study or a memory verse or a small group lesson. Be reading the scriptures. Uh, There are things that you can do throughout the day to keep your mind stayed on him. Even if you're working, even when you're doing life, you can be in that constant mode of just checking in with him in prayer. You can be in worship, thanking him for what he's done, um, asking for guidance. And uh, I also want to encourage you, if you've not started it yet or haven't attempted it or don't know what I'm talking about, uh, work on... uh, considering prayer journaling and Bible study journaling. It just takes four or five minutes a day. You could take a long time doing that, Uh, but it's a good way to kind of focus our hearts and minds on Him, and I've been encouraging you to do that this year. You can find a couple of videos about that down in the show notes if you're interested. The most important thing in the show notes, though, uh, that are included with each episode is a list of the references of Scripture that I mention uh, in each episode. So that's there for you to go back in your own personal study if you so wish. Well, our verse for the day for, what is today? January the 20th, 2024 comes from 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 20 and it reads as follows from the English Standard Version. Knowing this, first of all, that no prophecy of scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. Oh, I'm excited for us to park here. We use this verse frequently throughout the year. We did last year and the year before we were talking about um, how all scripture is inspired by God and it all comes from him. Um, But I'm excited for us to park here a little longer today and see what we can learn. But you know, if you've been on this journey with me for very long, that this is the time that I think it's wise for us to take just a few minutes to think about where we are in the scripture, who may have written this letter, and uh, what was going on. We know that Peter wrote this because at the beginning it says, uh, Simeon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ. He gives us his credentials right there, lets us know who he is. To those who have obtained a faith of equal standing with ours by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. And then he says, May grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. This is the second of Peter's letters that we have in our New Testament canon. You may recall that the New Testament begins with um, 
the four gospels, then it moves to New Testament history. And we read a lot about Peter in the gospels. We read about a lot about Peter in that book of New Testament history, which is Acts. Then we move into Paul's letters. There's 13 of those. And then the general letters of which uh, Peter's two letters fall in there. There's eight of those uh, general letters. And then the New Testament book of prophecy, which is Revelation. We know that Peter was uh, an apostle. He mentions that here, but we see that also in the Gospels. And he's thought to have been the chief apostle. He's listed first when they talk about the apostles. He was in that, uh, and what I mean by first, when you look in the list of apostles, um, his brother Andrew told him about Jesus. And they went back and Jesus called Andrew and Peter and said, um, I will make you fishers of men. Come follow me. I will make you fishers of men. And that's exactly what they did. And I'm so thankful for that example. Peter, James, and John were kind of in that inner circle of apostles with the Lord Jesus. Um, they were able to see his transfiguration. Peter's, um, some of his shortcomings are mentioned within the pages of scripture about how he denied Christ, about how he sometimes would say things without thinking, but God still used him mightily. Jesus still showed his grace and his love and his mercy and even told Peter uh, before Peter denied Jesus. He told him that he was going to deny him. Jesus said, you will deny me three times before the cock crows. And, and then Jesus even told Peter what was going to happen and that he had prayed for him. I love this part. I think this had to have been such a comfort to Peter when he looked back because he didn't think he would do Nigh Jesus. He didn't think that he would fail. He loved Jesus and he wanted to do the right thing. But listen to this in Luke 22 31. It says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you that he might sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. And that's exactly what Peter did after he had betrayed Christ. And then when he came back, he turned back and God used him mightily. You know, when um, the Holy Spirit fell on that day of Pentecost to all those believers there in Jerusalem, um, Peter was the chief spokesperson and he preached that day of Pentecost and it says, I believe in Acts, um, more than 3,000 were added to their number that day. God used him mightily um, and Peter cared for his people. And in these um, these letters, he truly is trying to strengthen his brothers. You know, in that letter of First Peter, he was encouraging um, those who were dispersed all around in their suffering. The second letter of Peter has a little bit different tone. Um, and he it's thought that he's right there at the end of his life because he says here in Second Peter 1.12, he says, Therefore, I intend always to remind you of these qualities, though you know though you know them and are established in truth that you have, I think it is right as long as I'm in this body to stir you up by way of reminder, since I know that the putting off of my body will be soon, as our Lord Jesus Christ made clear to me. And so he knew his days were short, and it's thought that the, that he was martyred not much longer after he had written this. Um, but the the uh, theme of this letter was uh, to expose false teachers and so that the people would be able to know so that they would be able to pick them out and so that they would flee from that false teaching. And that is his main theme. And it was not only important then, but oh, friends, it's so important for us now because that devil, that deceiver, our adversary, that enemy of our souls, the devil, um, he tries to discredit God's word and to uh, suppress the truth. And so we need to know the truth and we need to be able to pick out those who are speaking things that are false and that are not true. And the way that we do that is that we are in his word. We read his word, we study his word, we live it out and we share it. And so uh, Peter is getting ready to tell us here in this letter more about the authority and the truth of God's word and how important it is that we hold on to that.
because it came from him. And that's, we will measure that truth up against everything that this world and that that devil throws against it. And so I'm excited for us to park here today and see what we can learn. So Peter starts out as he opens his letter here in verse 3, reminding us that God has given everything to us that we need through the power of his Holy Spirit. Listen to this. He says, His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence, by which he has granted us to his precious and very great promises. And uh, those promises were given in the scriptures. Uh, So that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of its sinful desire. And then we fast forward over to verse uh, 16, and I want to read this leading up to our verse for the day. He says, For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. In other words, they didn't make this up. And he's saying this to compare um, the true apostles to those false teachers and those false uh, apostles. He said, We were eyewitnesses. We saw him. He says, for when he received honor and glory from God the Father and the voice was born to him by the the majestic glory, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this very voice born from heaven, for we were with him on the holy mountain. And he, what he's talking about there, and we mentioned it at the beginning of this podcast, was Peter, James, and John were there on the Mount of Transfiguration. They saw Jesus in his glory, and they saw Moses and Elijah meet with Jesus there. They heard God's voice from heaven. And so he's saying, I'm telling you, I I can tell you all these things because I was an eyewitness. He also walked with Jesus and talked with Jesus. He saw Jesus' miracles. He saw Jesus be crucified. He saw him after he was resurrected. So he knew that of which he spoke, and he wanted to remind those that he to whom he was writing um, that that was the case. And it wasn't to be arrogant, but that was kind of like his credentials, like we've talked about with the Apostle Paul. You know, he often would put his credentials at the beginning of the letter. Uh, but Peter wanted them to know, you know, we saw him. I was there. So what I'm telling you is true. I got it firsthand, in other words. And then in verse 19, And we have the prophetic word more fully confirmed, to which you will do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. And here's our voice. Knowing this, first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. And I'm going to read one verse after this. For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. So do you see what he was doing? He was saying not only did we see Jesus but in seeing Jesus, in seeing what he's done, in seeing um, all of what his death and burial and resurrection means for a believer, we have uh, the prophetic word. So those things um, in the Old Testament books of prophecy and even all the way back into the law and in the Psalms, those things that foretold about this coming Messiah. Um, He's saying, we have that more fully confirmed. We saw him in person. We saw what he did. And he's saying, and we have the prophetic word more fully confirmed to which you will do well to pay attention. So in other words, we're telling you it's true and you better pay attention to what we're telling you (laughs) as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Remember that Jesus was described as that light of the world as, um, and he said we were the same. Uh, But if you look over in John chapter one, verse one, the gospel of John chapter one, verse one. uh, Well, actually I'm going to hop down to verse uh, verse 4, and this is talking about Jesus. Uh, John chapter 1 verse 4, he says, in him was life and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. So Peter was talking about this. He says, we have that prophetic word um, 
com- fully confirm to you, wh- to which you'll do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place. This this truth, which Jesus was the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, Jesus was also the light shining into this dark world, and the darkness could not overcome it. And so Peter is really reminding them about this. And then he's saying, knowing first of all in our verse that no prophecy of Scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. He's saying that because these false apostles were doing their own interpretation of Scripture, their own take on what Scripture was instead of going back and seeing did it match with the count, the whole counsel of God's word? And was that understanding given by the Holy Spirit? And you can tell it if it is because it will match the whole, the whole story. These far off things that people pull out of scripture and say, well, this is what I think it means, but it doesn't match the rest of scripture. That's how you know that it's untrue. You can't know that it's untrue if you don't know the word, though. And so that's why it is so important for us to know this. But I want to break down for you when uh, what that word prophecy means. If we look in the um, in an interlinear Bible and look up the Greek uh, for that word prophecy, it's uh, the forth telling of the truth. It's, um, you know, a lot of times when we think about prophecy, we think about telling about things that are going to happen in the future. Um, and that does sometimes go with prophecy. But the other thing is just forth telling God's truth, speaking forth the truth. And so Peter's saying, knowing this, first of all, that no forth telling of, of truth of Scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. It's not from uh, from us. It is uh, given by God, by his Holy Spirit. And he, he expounds on that in that verse 21 where he says, For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. So in other words, these the, what the prophets in the Old Testament had was given and inspired by God. And the understanding of that is given in an, um, by God and by his Holy Spirit. And I want you to see this here. If we hop over to 1 John chapter 2, verse 27, the apostle John was doing something similar to what Peter was doing there when he was telling them to be careful about the false teachers and those who would come in and uh, who were saying things that were against Christ. He says um, in 1 John chapter 2, verse 26, he says, I write these things to you about those who are trying to deceive you, but the anointing that you received, and that's from the Holy Spirit, from him abides in you, and you have no need that anyone should teach you, but as his anointing teaches you about everything and is true and is no lie, just it is as it has taught you abide in him. In other words, John was saying, um, if you have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit's going to guide you and help you to know what the truth is. And that's very similar to what we see here, that no prophecy, no foretelling of the truth that is in Scripture comes from from man. It's all given by God and His Holy Spirit. And I want to show you one more place where Jesus was talking about when He would leave that, um, He had asked the Father to send the Holy Spirit um, while Jesus went back to heaven. Listen to this. Well, actually, at first I want to read to you what Jesus said in John 14, 25. He said, These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. And then over in John 16, 13, he says, um, When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. God's Holy Spirit is what gives us the understanding 
and that interpretation. And if you look up what the interpretation means, it means the untying, the the unloosening of an understanding. And so Peter's point was that doesn't come just from man or something they conjure up in their mind. It comes from God. It comes from his Holy Spirit. And so we must remember that. And, and the way that we'll know that it's true is if we know the word. Because, friends, there are false teachers here left and right. There are people who claim to be Christians who do not teach what is uh, in accordance with God's word. And we must know it so that we can flee from those false teachers. I encourage you to read, study, and live and share his word for his glory. Blessings to you, friends. Until next time.